sent a message to Steph. I was like, it looks I love you, but if you ever do this to me, you will have words. Thank you, buddy. Get on it every time. Is it upbeat? Is it down? I don't know. It's very upbeat. Very upbeat. Got it. What do you got? These are for you. Oh, thank you. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, you made my day. Uh, uh, okay. There's six in there. You can either share them with your family. Oh, I'll, share it. I'll share it. Okay. Thank All you. All right. You're awesome. That's my Christmas present. Thank you. Don't dance. Don't go. Okay, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Mark. Merry Christmas Eve. 
Good morning. Is everybody asleep? No, it's Christmas! Awesome. I don't think anything's on up here yet. Can we have, there it is.
told me pa-rum pum 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 A newborn king to see pa-rum pum 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 Our finest gifts we bring pa-rum pum 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 To lay before the king pa-rum pum 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 Rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum. So to honor him, pa rum pum pum pum. When we I think the kids are supposed to be dismissed. Yep. yep. Okay. Don't mean to complicate it, but... Okay, so elementary kids are going to go out right now this side. Preschool and nursery will go out at normal time. Preschool, if you can try to remember, you're going to drop your kids off on this side and pick them up on this side. Okay?
to Bethlehem Expecting child They search the end To find a place for you
was beaten, all darkness was slain. All his passion poured out like rain upon the earth. Oh
you saw and you conquered because you came and you saw and you conquered because you came and you saw and you conquered nothing stands in your way
Christmas, you don't just have to celebrate the birth, you just celebrate Jesus. <laughs> so <clears throat> I just felt like today we just celebrate Jesus. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. <clears throat> so I don't really want to move from here yet. I know it feels like we've been here a while, but... <clears throat> Is alive. 
we're going to declare this together one more time. Oh, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing great. your breath cause it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise it's your breath cause it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you all and great are you get a shout in the house. How great is he?
why we could call you great. And as many people are in this room today are the reasons. And so infinitely more. But the one I'm thinking about right now, one of the reasons why I call you great today is that you chose humanity. You chose to become us. In my limited thinking, I could think of so many ways that you could have had us back, but the way you chose it is so beautiful. And so Jesus, I call you great today because you became one of us. And you are now forever like us on the throne with us. It is this glorious mystery that I still struggle to apprehend is that there is a man on the throne So, big brother Jesus, we thank you today for being great. And we honor you as such because you gave up the perfection of divinity. You laid it down to embrace the humility of our own condition so that we might embrace the perfection of divinity. I got one person who rejoices in that today. I can't believe it. There is so much that we could easily get caught up in right now. December 24th. The person of Jesus centers us again. Whether he's a baby, whether he's a boy, whether he's a man, or whether he's the king on the throne, or somewhere in between, he centers us again. The full expression of the Godhead is the person of Jesus. And everything humanity could ever be is in Jesus. Everything we could ever hope for is in Him. You are truly our hope this moment and this day. And may you, that censoring hope, set us free from every other thing that yanks at our identity to try to make us someone or feel a thing. It's not who we are. Center us again, O oh hope of, of God. Where craziness wants to pull us in all different directions. Where depression wants to remind us of what's wrong. We center ourselves on the hope of all hope. On the King. On the Son. And we say, great are you, Lord. We center ourselves again in you. And we cry out, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. cry out for me. I'm not going to let my neighbor or someone that's got it better than me cry out for me. Yeah. Oh, on the earth. You, Lord. I sing great. Of you than before. 
us. Do you remember what it was like to praise Him because He's good? Not because your circumstances are good. Praise Him because of who He is. Praise Him not because it's a song we sing, but because of who He is. Because of His greatness. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Are you, Lord. You see, Emmanuel is the reminder that no matter how bad life has been, everything can be redeemed. Emmanuel is the reminder that no matter how bad life has been to you, He can redeem it all. Emmanuel is the reminder that no matter how good life has been, there is so much more. Emmanuel is the reminder that there are gifts all around us. Open our eyes to see. Emmanuel is the reminder that who we are right now in this moment is fully loved, fully accepted. Emmanuel, God with us is the reminder that there's a higher standard and I will reach for more. I will not be satisfied. Emmanuel is the reminder that righteousness has a standard. That righteousness is my standard and I will arise to it. Emmanuel is the reminder that when I can't arise to it, grace empowers me to. Emmanuel is the reminder to love the enemy. And to let go of my expectations of them and of every other person. Emmanuel is the reminder that I will bridge the gap. That I will wipe the slate clean. That I will not demand something of anyone else anymore. Emmanuel is the reminder that I will be the demands I've made of others. Emmanuel is the reminder that disappointment isn't the last page of the book. That failure is a learning lesson. Emmanuel is the reminder that I will lead well. That I will take for granted nothing in my life. Emmanuel, God with us, is the reminder to remain humble, yet knowing we have everything. Emmanuel is knowing I don't need the best hotel room. I can be born in a manger. And I can still change the world. says I can come into this world with nothing and leave it with everything Emmanuel is the reminder that I have a name and it's worth it being known in the earth Emmanuel is the reminder that I can't keep living small I can't keep living small Emmanuel is, it's worth the risk. It's worth the risk. It's worth the risk. Because he saw us as worth the risk. And he surrendered himself to us as a baby and as a lamb.
And no matter how many times they misunderstand you, no matter how many times they take you for granted, it's not about how they perceive you, it's about who you are and why you exist. And just like Jesus misunderstood more than any other human being in the history of time, he still stands as Emmanuel. He still stands as God with us. And he remembers who he is. And so will I. I will be Emmanuel. I will be God with us. Great are you, Lord. Emmanuel is the reminder that we can always start again. You are never too old to start a new thing. Emmanuel is the reminder that numbers of failures do not connotate the next failure. It could mean success. Try again. Try again. Emmanuel is the reminder to remember. pastor recently wrote, I saw this, that uh, Jesus came to this God-forsaken earth to redeem us. And that's the story of Christmas. And it hurt my heart to read a pastor saying that because God never forsook the earth. There's no such thing as God forsaken anything. That word should be struck from the vocabulary. Now, man forsaken is true. I actually think God came to the earth man forsook. It's not God forsaken earth. It's man forsaken. We forgot what he originally told us. And so Jesus had to come to remind us and to set us back on the path that the earth is ours. This life is ours. And so today I'm so thankful for Jesus. I'm so thankful for Jesus. (laughs) So we'll take the offering, get that out of the way. So if you brought a little bit of money that you didn't give to other people in holiday season, we'll take it. We'll advance the kingdom with it.
All right, uh, nursery kids now can be dismissed. There are any left? Okay, so it's 11.27. How many people have Christmas plans like immediately after church? Raise your hand if you do. Couple? Okay. Like you got to get out of here plans? Raise your hands. Okay, because I'm trying to decide if I want, maybe we need to all decide this together. Do you want to have a standard Christmas service or do you want to have like, Something not like that. <laughs> Could be, Matt. That's probably the greatest. Are you sure? Okay, I need a, uh, like a bag or a basket. Can someone run out there and get one of the baskets that you guys piled all your riches in? I want to do a couple things. Do not need a podium. Okay, so I'll start this while they're getting a basket. Um, let me do a really quick Christmas little five minute plug message thing, and then we'll get on to what I think would be more fun. Okay, so has anybody in here been adopted, like physically? Like you're an adopted child. Raise your hand if you've been adopted. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Okay, roughly seven people. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, TV and movies and all of that have kind of used this as a theme, and I've noticed this to be true, that at some point in time, and I have not been adopted, so this is not speaking from experience, this is, relating to people that have been adopted or watching TV and movies about people that have been adopted. So you might want to speak to this better than I can. But um, for the seven people or so that raised their hands, at what age can you just shout out one at a time when you found out you were adopted? Ten years old. When did you find out? 17 or 18. Who else raised their hand here? I'm sorry, I don't remember who raised their hand. Yeah. You were seven? Okay, so as soon as they could, you could comprehend it, you were told. Okay, was, there, was that everybody? Did I miss somebody? I'm sorry. Say here better. He said seven. Oh, Taven, when did you find out? Twelve. Twelve years old. Okay, so I'm assuming... Now, let me, no, don't let me assume. For some of you that were adopted, what was the immediate thing that came up in you when you found out you were adopted? Like, what, what came up inside of you? Can I? Like, Monica, I'll just ask you, since it's, what, was one of the, what were some of the thoughts or feelings that came up inside of you when you found out you were adopted? Um, well, I just wanted, really, because my dad was still really good. Say that again. My father was really good at that point. My parents had just gotten divorced. Uh-huh. Okay. So I would say wanted, really wanted. Because wanted. I, they had to explain to me about the other family, the other sister. Mm-hmm. So at that moment, Dad. Got it. Daniel, right? Daniel? How about you? I just felt loved and cared for. Felt loved and cared for. How about you? What were the thoughts that came into your mind? Because you were probably the oldest when you found out, right? Who am I? Huh? Who am I? Who am I? Finally. I was really beginning to think this was backfiring on me. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> that probably at some point in time, maybe you couldn't articulate it. And for those of you, like Kate, I remember when Kate finally decided, it wasn't that long ago, that you were going to go search out your biological parents, right? It was a couple years ago that you really started that process. 
And the TV and movies that all give us this experience give us that same thing. Like, I want to know where I came from. Hello? Yeah, there's this dry, even though those who adopted you, you are so thankful. You're so, you're so thankful that you were loved, that you were wanted, that you were cared about, that someone took you in. But immediately when you find out that you were adopted, this question rises up on the inside of us that has no, like, it wasn't there before. For 17 years, it really wasn't there before. You thought you were these people's child, and you were fine, and then all of a sudden you find out you're adopted, and these questions start rising up in you. Who am I? Whose am I? And I feel like Jesus is the ultimate answer to that question. Like, I want to sum up not just Christmas. I want to sum up Genesis all the way up to the 400 years of silence, and then Jesus shows up, and then all the way to Revelation, and all the way to 2000, almost 18. And I think what Jesus is, Jesus is this huge, I want to remind you who you are. Because humanity was adopted. Now don't, careful. I actually think we were adopted like kidnap style. Seriously. I feel like we're one of the ones that don't even realize that we were brought up and raised by someone that really wasn't our mom or dad. But convinced us that we were. And we lived a life, and we lived an identity, and we lived a way and an experience that some other parent taught us to live. And then Jesus shows up in the middle of history, and he creates this, maybe we'll, we'll use the 17-year-old example. He shows up to us at 17, and he says, you're actually somebody else's. Jesus is the ultimate, like, question creator on the inside of humanity. He's the one that brings us back to the most root and basic questions of the why of our existence. And it's purposefully that way. That's why uh, Malachi actually calls the coming of Jesus the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's the prophetic, last prophetic word before Jesus comes. Right before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Malachi chapter 4, you can read it for yourself. I believe that is not some like revelation, earthquake, firework. You know, all the stuff that left behind might tell us. I think it's Jesus. He's both great. Oh my gosh, we have a father who loves us. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful. I'm finally loved. I'm finally accepted. So much stuff makes sense. And he's terrible. But I've got this life. And I've done all these things and I've said all these things and I've made all these agreements and contracts and these commitments and all these things. And then Jesus comes and he causes us to kind of... <gasps> Jesus is the great now what of history. And he shows up not only in history time-wise, but he shows up in our history. And he shows up again and again and again and he causes you to ask the same question that this gentleman... What's your name, by the way? John, thank you, that John asked, who am I? And whose am I? That's why I'm so thankful for Jesus, because he centers us. And there's these longings on the inside of every adopted person when they first realize that they're not who people said they are, who the world says they are, who someone else that hasn't influenced them for so long says they are. Jesus comes in and says, oh, you're this. And he centers us again like we just talked about here. I pray for Christmas. Now, I know this doesn't sound all rosy and baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes type of thing. I pray that Jesus would continually be your great and terrible now what? I pray for every one of us that when you're struggling and you don't know, he shows up and he reminds you who you are. When you don't know what to do, you don't know what's next step, he reminds you, you're your father's son. You're your father's daughter. His heart is for you. And I pray that the whole world experience that on a regular basis. Amen? Amen. I love it. I love it. Jesus is the great now. Okay.
I love it. He is that answer. Okay, so in Luke chapter 2, now let's do some fun stuff. In Luke chapter 2, uh, the prophecy, the angel comes and he, he tells the uh, shepherds that, hey, look, I bring you great, night, great nightings, great tidings, <laughs> good tidings of great joy. Don't look at me like that. You're messing me up when you look at me like that. Good tidings of great joy. For in the city of David, which is Bethlehem, there, will be, there is born unto us a son or a, a savior, exactly what it says in Luke chapter 2, but he is a son. We know that. Who is Christ the Lord. Okay? And then the next verse says this. And this will be the sign to you. Anybody know what the sign is? Don't look it up. I can't believe that pastor told you not to look in the Bible. But just don't look in the Bible for a second. What's the sign to us? Come on, who's been reading their Bibles lately? Nobody? <laughs> you will find lying in a manger a child what? Wrapped in clothes. You know, I, like, there's all kinds of things for him to describe, him being the angel. But a child wrapped. Like, why would that language be so specific? Wouldn't it be enough just to say there's a baby in a stable? There was something that struck me. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I read the Christmas story every year, and I ask the Lord to kind of show me something new. And this year he showed me a child wrapped. And so for me, when I hear wrapped, I immediately want to... Anybody else? I want to unwrap. Like, I'm still a kid. I will be a kid for the rest of my life. You wrap something up, I just want to tear it open. I would just, everything in me. Anybody else? Like, like right now, my fingers are ready to tear something open. Like, I, are anybody practicing? Like, warming up, stretching? Okay. So for me, when I see this is the sign, this is the sign that a Savior has come, there was a child wrapped up. Yeah, he's kept warm in that. Yes, it makes him feel safe, but there's something inside me. I just want to unwrap him. I want to, I want to see everything about him. I want to open him up so not only I can experience him, but everyone else can experience him. And that, that phrase grips me today, and I want it to kind of have that same impact on you today because I think that word 2,000 years ago about the sign that Christ is here, the sign of good tidings of great joy is still among us and it's here today. And I think this sign for us is that you have all kinds of gifts wrapped all around you. They're all wrapped up all around you. And oftentimes they walk in like this to your life. Like for me, when I see that, I see someone inviting me to unwrap you. <laughs> like, I, 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 I think there's a few other people like this with the same personality. Like if you come in closed, you're actually asking for me to knock. <laughs> Anyone else? And if you come in wide open, oh, you're good. Okay, fine. But if you come in closed, you're in trouble. Like, that's just the way I feel. I can't help it. And I think that's why that verse grips me in Luke chapter 2 of a child wrap. Like, I want to unwrap you. So I thought it would be fun <laughs> if we kind of had our own version of Christmas unwrapping today. And so, and as I thought about this even more, I thought we don't just need to do it on Christmas Eve, like I thought we could do Christmas in March where we would just all of a sudden just, okay, 10 minutes of Christmas in March and we would unwrap one another. And then we would do it in August and we would do it. And, when, and oh, even more fun? Like right in the middle of a church service, right in the middle of me preaching, if you're bored or distracted or you feel like we're not where we need to be, someone could just jump up and say, let's do Christmas. Come on. Like, I want to do more family in 2018. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I want to do more family interaction. Like, we're either going to be really scary to people or really fun to people, one or the other. <laughs> so, do we have, where'd the basket go? Okay. So, there, and please remind me, there's two things I want to do with this basket today. And I need lots of help remembering. Okay. So, here...
So what I, can we put more lights on? I want us to see each other better. This is not a time to set mood. Well, there is a time to set mood. I want to like make you all feel like you're in the interrogation room. These are questions. These are the way we're going to unwrap one another. Okay. Actually, yeah, just turn on the big ones. Turn on some of the big ones, like three and five or three, five and six. There we go. Ah, get over it. It'll be fine. Part of being unwrapped. That's right. Naked and unashamed, people. Okay, so if you don't want to participate, I don't know how to help you because this is what's going to happen. The very first person is going to volunteer to ask a question. So I'm only going to really need one volunteer. And then the person asking the question gets to pick anyone else in the room to ask the question to. Anyone. And then the person that was asked gets the next question. And then they get to choose. See how we're doing it? Yeah? So you are the present today. And my goal, our goal, is that we open you up a little bit and find. So there are some fun questions. There are some deep questions. There are some, seriously, questions. All for the sake of opening one another up and, and doing real church. Amen? Do you want to help me? Do you have ideas? Well, I think we need a microphone. Yeah, we need a microphone. Can we have another one? Do we only have one handheld today? That'd be great to have a second handheld today. Okay, so does anybody want to volunteer to ask the first question? Lauren, you had your hand up first. I can't ignore that. So come up here, and you get to ask anyone in the room you want. It is. But first, you've got to pick out who you're going to ask. You should have picked before you asked the question, read the question. No, I should have told you that. I didn't tell you that. No, no, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> you don't even have to know the person. In fact, it would be better if you didn't. Okay. Um, it's okay to say you. I'm going to pick somebody for you if you don't. Mm, okay. You uh, sitting next to the woman in the red shirt with the glasses. Yeah, you. Why don't you go up to him? Go up to him. Walk okay, up to okay, him. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's All true. Right, last question. Okay. Are you a morning or a night person? How do you compensate if you have to be the other? Compensate? Coffee. <laughs> Does that mean you're a night person? Uh, no, no. Uh, definitely a morning person, especially if you ask my wife. Definitely a morning person. What is your name, by the my way? My name's Nathan. Um, Hi, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Uh, my wife used to come here years and years ago, and we watch you guys from North Carolina online all the time. So, yes. she knows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love your services and uh, love uh, the love you guys have uh, amongst you and uh, the things you teach and uh, talk about getting closer to God. So. Cool. All right. All right. Your turn. I had to pick somebody before I read the question. It would probably be, well, you don't yeah, know many don't. anybody in here, so, yeah, so okay. it's up to Everybody you. Everybody else? Yeah. All right. I so. love that we picked someone who's never been here before. Awesome I almost volunteered. I was like, <laughs> should I just volunteer? Okay. Mm, I got to pick somebody, right? Okay. How about this guy with the, um, the tie-dye? Yeah, come on up. So where's the other microphone? Oh, I'll share with him. How did we lose? Okay. Let's do it that way. Okay. Come on. I'll leave him the microphone. You ask the question. So I'm Nathan. I don't know you. What's your name? I'm David. David? David. All right, David. What is your greatest motivation and why? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, David. <laughs> yeah, these are fun because they're not always easy to answer. I'd have to say to Haven right now because he gave me a a new breath of life when he came into my life. I was just like on standby. Yeah. Um, let me 
me see. Jason. Yeah. Ah. Jason, what was the toughest thing for you to encounter in yourself this past year? It's coming to you. Greatest or toughest? The toughest. Yeah, the toughest. Toughest. Well, in October, um, my mom got, had a spell, like a sick spell. She was in the hospital and stuff, and she's just, she was just, we didn't know she was going to make it or not, but by the grace of God, she's still here. She's with, she's still with me today. She's still with us today, and uh, I mean, it was a little, not a little, it was very scary, but I prayed to God, and uh, she went in on a Friday night. She was acting really, really goofy then that night and then that Saturday we she was really really sick and we didn't know if she was gonna make it or not but like I said God got her through it and she's still with me today okay yeah, you reach in this basket and pick out one question and then how are we gonna do that okay not in Braille. So. Good. Do you want to pick somebody? Do you have someone in mind that you want to pick? Um, Kendall. He's not here. Oh, Kendall, Kendall isn't here. Oh, he was earlier. He's, he's with the kids. He's uh, okay, he's with the kids. Uh, how? Why don't you describe? How about uh, the lady behind me? Oh, All right. <laughs> That's Michelle. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? <laughs> To be able to fly. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Michelle. I'm Michelle and I want to fly. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who I get to pick? Oh. Pick a person. My niece, Victorian. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go get her. Go get her. <laughs> oh, this is a good one for her. <laughs> I didn't really think about the logistics of this, as you could tell, so thanks for working with us. It's a big room. What are you specifically doing right now to improve your life? Uh. <laughs> She's got one. My name is Victorian, and I am currently getting my master's degree in pre-K to eighth grade special education. That's worth Oh, that's a good one. Mm. Is Ben in the room? Yes. Coming to you. Who is your greatest influence and why? I'm sorry, say again? Who is your greatest influence and why? Oh, um, I think it's changed um, as my life has gone on, but I would say my wife is my biggest influence because... Why? Oh, why? Um, because I don't know anyone who loves me more, so why would I let anybody else influence me? Um, in any in any way. So, all right. This is the question. I'm picking this man right here. Ooh. Oh, come on. <laughs> this this question is is contradictory in the question. You'll see how. All right. If you were to describe 2017 in one word, it would be blank, and then explain. <laughs> What? <laughs> and then explain. Then explain. Yeah. All right. Um. Good grief, that's deep. Ah, uh, Jared. Sorry. Is that your one word? Um. I don't know. That's a hard one. Um. 
<laughs> Clarifying. Clarifying. Yeah, I, I think this year has been kind of like a, I've had some uneasiness in my spirit. And just recently, I think, you know, I'm just hearing God more clearly. Um, I think I have a stronger picture and understanding of what, uh, um, what, li- what 2018 at least will look like. So, yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you. All right, let me find a really hard one. <laughs> Who are you choosing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Who really doesn't want to do this? Who's looking down? <laughs> yeah. They're not looking at you. Jim. Who is Jesus to you? Everything. (laughs) Yeah, he's everything. He's brought me here. Gave me good guys like you around me and Jared and my family. So yeah, he's everything. Simple as that. Okay. Who are you picking? Yeah. Who are you picking? You know, I picked well, I couldn't see it anyhow. That's true, you couldn't. Let's see. Mm. Let's pick Travis. Travis! Like that. <clears throat> I might need a little help. I don't have my glasses on. What? <laughs> How would you like to be remembered? How would you like to be remembered? I'm Travis, everybody. Hi, Travis. Hi, Travis. That is a tough one. I would want to be remembered not necessarily for all the things that I've done, but doing those things. For, for, I consider myself very much like the servant's heart. I do as much as I can for people. So that's what I want to be remembered for. Hmm. Not necessarily the acts, but always doing them as best I can. Dang. Oof. <laughs> Lamar. Oh, ho, ho. I'm Called out. <laughs> I tasted blank one time and will never again. <laughs> Hold on, we got to go get him. We're coming to you. You just stay put. I don't want you to move. Can you reach this? Oh. What was the question again? <laughs> I tasted blank one time and never will again. It's very slippery. Defeat. Oof. Didn't like the taste. I always like the win. Well. That's not what we expected. <laughs> You're so deep. <laughs> Can you read it? Oh, who am I going to pick? Can you read that? Can you see it? Yeah, I can see okay, it. Okay, okay. Who do I want to pick? I don't know. What about Casey. On Christmas Day, my greatest joy is blank. I would say just um, just being with my parents and my family, just looking around and just reflecting on the year, just what we've been through, and just coming together in the simplicity of that. But the depth that you know we can encounter in that moment, I think, is something that I mean we do that all the time, not just on Christmas Day, but that's something just in general that I love to do with with my parents, and I think that's what better morning to do that than on Christmas. So. Cat. Let's go to her. Hmm. I 
Jeez, this one's cool. I, oh, great, I can bring my glasses. It's okay. If I had the opportunity to do life over again, I would choose to be blank. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, um, I told this to my granddaughter just last night, I have uh, a granddaughter, Ayana, who's very talented in many areas, but she's kind of like her Grammy, and if it's hard, she doesn't want to do it. Cool. So I think I wish that when I was a younger person, I would have applied myself to the natural talents that I have. Because now that my knees hurt, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, okay. Karen. Do you hear that, Karen? Let's walk over. <clears throat> you don't have to read that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I hope someone got me blank for Christmas. Ah. Uh, <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> Sheesh. Well, I'm kind of looking at the, um, not the material things. So I would have to say, sorry, a heart that's pure. Mm. Spiritually and physically. Mm. Oh. Trying to keep okay. it together here, okay? Why? I'm trying to keep it together here. Don't you're not helping. Well, um, that's okay. I, I had to keep it together last <laughs> month. Okay. I can't see that. You can't see that either. This is nope. becoming a trend. <laughs> when first meeting someone oh wait a minute. Who are you asking? Oh, okay. Who am I asking? Um I'd like to hear from this young lady. Okay. Her name is Roshni. When first meeting someone, it really puts me at ease if they... If they have a bright light about them and they're just a bit more open. And then that way I just feel I can connect to them and dive in. So if they come in closed, like when I was talking earlier, you're like, I don't want to deal with that or... Huh? Well, I think just about anybody, because I just talk to anybody, really. Yeah? But it puts you at ease if they're already opened up and... I guess so. It does. Okay. Yeah. All right. Your turn. Oh. Okay. I'm going to pick somebody. What is the greatest lesson you well, learned you gotta pick in life? I have. Okay. What's your name? Okay. My name's Kate. Could you stand up? <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Kate. <laughs> okay, what was the question? Again? What's the greatest <laughs> lesson I've learned in life? Yes. Oh, gosh. There's just so many thoughts that are going through my mind right now. It's... Um, the greatest lesson I've learned is, and I'm still learning it, it's how to let go of the expectations of this world and see God as my biggest source, um, comforter and hope. And... Hmm. So letting go of the expectations of this world. Yeah. Wow. That's really good. Okay. I'd like to ask Monica. Because I don't know you. <laughs> can't you just come for dinner? Oh, no. You can't, you can't ask her that one. Sorry. I was going to say. Wait, wait. No. Like, oh, trust great. me. Trust no, me. You, you don't can't. Want, you don't want, you you don't want, don't want that, you don't that one. one. No, you don't. <laughs> you can okay. ask this one if you want to. <laughs> How was someone Jesus to you recently? Um, honestly, I'd probably say in my home group. Um, the last couple months have been a little bit crazy, and it doesn't matter 
day or night time, whatever, they're there. And they actually came and stayed at, with me at work <laughs> to help do an event um, that came across last minute that was a little bit insane. And, but it doesn't matter how crazy the request is or whatever. Like, I said they're the other half of my heart, and they really are. Hmm. Awesome. OK, who are you picking? Oh. Kelly. What is something you feel you were successful at this year? I guess I should run over there. Hurry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm um, going to get there. Successful? Um, Gaining two daughters and having two weddings. <laughs> Who are you picking first? Um, Kristen. What have you been meaning to do but haven't yet? Hmm. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to make something with those bread tabs. Yeah, whatever happened to that? Yeah, I just called myself out. <laughs> I just have a bag for you, by the way. Yeah. What? Explain that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, ask. Yeah, okay. Explain. So I asked for bread tabs because I wanted to use it for my senior project. But I already made my senior project like six months ago. And I decided to go with metal because the thing about working with plastic is. She's an artist, by the way. I'm an artist, wondering. in case yeah. you wondered. And the thing about working with plastic is like it's not really healthy to breathe in. So I kind of sketched myself out about it. But I was actually just thinking about it this week and I was like, why didn't I think of using super glue? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to melt the plastic. So Sniffing yeah. Sniffing glue is always good. Sniffing yeah. glue, yes. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. kind of better. Okay. So do I pick one or pick a person? I would prefer first? you pick a person first. Okay. I want to pick this kid in the tie-dye shirt over yes. here because he's so excited. What's your name? Taven. What is it? Taven. Whoa, that's cool. I've never met one of those before. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Ooh, yeah. Tell us a story from your childhood that still has a deep meaning in your life today. <laughs> Thank you. One time whenever uh, my grandma was uh, with uh, some guy, uh, they, she was being harassed by him. So that stays with me. Did it turn out OK? No. No? Nah, he, had, he got in jail, and he got a restraining order from him. But she's OK? From... Good. Grandma. All right. Okay, you ready? Pick somebody. Yeah. Nice. All right. Okay, Rochelle, come here. If you could say one sentence that would want the whole earth to hear, what would it be? Good job. Stay true to yourself. All right. All right. Okay, your turn. If money were no object, what would you do? What? If money were no object, what if would you do? If you were do? a million billionaire. <laughs> I would give most of it away to charities. OK. Do you have a specific one that really touches your heart? Not really. No? Recycling. <laughs> you, can pick this, you can pick the charities. You ready? We'll do a couple more. Um. Share a specific time you overcame a fear. 
Um, so last year I was applying for this scholarship to study abroad and I had to like meet with this woman and like tell her like all of my hopes and all of my dreams and all about my academics and that was like terrifying, but yeah. I did it, so. I was very proud of you for that. Yeah. Okay. I'm here, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... That was awesome. Okay. All right, pick your person. Mark. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I tried to do this to help me remember a person's name when I first meet them. Okay, um, I say it over and over in my head. Uh, it's this cool thing at, at the restaurant, we have to type in your name for every order. And I found that when we ask your name, we hear it, we type it in, and then I actually say it to them during the order process at some point in time. For the rest of the meal, like if they're out in the dining room and they're eating, I'll walk up to them and I'll say, hey Jim, how's your meal? And it freaks them out. So, yeah. And then if they come in again and I say, hey, Jim, welcome back, that, they're like, and then their wife is with them, that's a problem. Because <laughs> then she thinks, how often are you here? <laughs> so I have to limit that sometimes. It's actually not in our benefit all the time to do that. Okay, I'll do the last one. Pick someone. Jay. I, I saved this one because girls kept asking girls and we couldn't do this. Boxers, briefs, or boxer briefs? <laughs> <laughs> or do we not want to know? <laughs> boxer briefs. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Okay. So I thought we could do this every once in a while, like right in the middle of a service or when we're feeling kind of stale and we need to reconnect, we can do that some more. That sound okay? Yeah. yeah? Okay, one more thing before we go. I would like uh, Matt and Tiffany to come up here. Um, I don't know if you know this, some of you do, some of you don't, but, and just bring the tissues, yes. <laughs> Uh, Matt and Tiffany chose this year to uh, start the process to become foster parents. And it's... And you know, usually you would take one, just kind of get the thing warmed up a little bit, see if you like it. Maybe you take two if you're a little challenging. Then you take three and you're crazy. No. You are loving. And that's what this family did. And they saw a family that was struggling. They saw the children that were really suffering in the struggle. And they thought, we're going to put feet to what we see in our hearts and what we feel in our hearts. And so they went the whole process of uh, being approved to be parents, foster parents, taking these children in, going through all of the meetings that are going through. I mean, it took a lot of risk because they could risk relationship with this family. And instead, what they've done is they've really made themselves an integral part of these three children's lives. And I just, four, sorry. Forgive me. I wanted to keep going, and I remember, so they did four at one time. Oh, I thought I went to four. So I feel like it's appropriate that we honor them. And I think a great way to do that at Christmas season is just to do a pocket offering and just bless them. <laughs> to help them with this at Christmas time. I can't think of a better time to do it. And no, you have no choice in the matter. That's what I love about this. So, um, and I don't want you to say a word. You can just cry or do whatever it is you do. <coughs> and, we're, and we're just going to bless you guys and tell you that we believe in you and that we're with you in this and that these girls have a bigger family than just yours. And I want you to remember that when you feel like you're at the end of your rope. There's a lot of other ropes here in this family that want to help you and be a part of this. So today we're going to bless you in the way that we know how, but I want you to know 2018 is a year where we really want to come around you and help you with this. Thank you for demonstrating the Father's heart 
in this way. Something else I want to say to you is there are a lot of people who would think we're not qualified yet, so we got to go through all these processes, we got to get all these things fixed in our lives before we do this. I'm really glad that you guys are just like, no, we got to do this. And you're, a, you're an example of what it looks like to heal as you help, to grow and mature as you do what's on your heart to do. I want to honor you for that. Yes. Amen? All right. So just bring it up, bless them, let them know how much you see. All right, if you didn't bring cash today, because I, I know we're becoming an increasingly cashless society, if you'd like to write a check, even for a small amount, you can write it out to who, and we'll make sure that they get the cash. WHO, otherwise, cash in the bank. And we're going to end with this, so to every one of you and the family, an extended Merry Christmas. Enjoy family, friends. We love you. Thank you for being here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.